Hey, Bayek, it's me, Ian. And in today's video, I'm going to discuss this. It's The Relic from 1997. And before I get into it, I'd just like to say a big thank you to Phil. He sent me two more films, and this is the first one. And I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for sending me these films. And um, I hope I give um, a good review on all of them. And I will try my best. <laughs> right, so here we are then. This is from 1997. And you can describe it as a sci-fi monster creature horror film i think that might that covers it all i would say um it's directed by uh peter himes i think that's how you pronounce his surname himes uh i looked at his kind of films that he's directed and i'm quite impressed uh capricorn one for instance the cult capricorn one film he directed also, Outland, which is another great film, sci-fi films, 2010 sci-fi films, Time Cop, Van Damme. Well, you can't go wrong. He directed that? Yes. Oh, yes. Anyhow, that's just the one about the director. Um, its source material is from a book from, let's see, 1995, this book. Was it was a bestseller called Relic, and the authors it was two authors were Douglas Preston and Lincoln Child. So that is the source material of the book. Um, and um, it was actually, uh, when you have a look at the Rotten Tomato score of the film as a whole, I always look there at the beginning, it's got a 37% Rotten Tomatoes score. In other words, the critics were again not that impressed, but yet they should be because, I mean, you you get to ridiculous um, levels of criticism and, um, you know, like, it's not alien, it's not this, it's not that. No, it's not. It's its own film and its own techniques. Um, and uh, I don't understand critics at all. I give up sometimes with them. But I mention them because we like to have a little moan about them. <laughs> Just a little. Anyhow, uh, so that's the uh, <laughs> that bit sorted out. Right. So, um, well, the lead actress in this film is uh, Penelope andrea miller she plays the biologist right and then um the sort of main actor playing his first sort of lead role actually he's always played more support role is tom sizemore now tom sizemore he was in um true romance heat which is quite a cold picture uh popular and uh, Natural Born Killers, interesting film as well. So he's got all those things. He's he, he's always been that sort of supporting actor. So this was a great opportunity for him to uh, have a lead role, and he did it beautifully. <laughs> the the chemistry between those two um, is really good. The two main um, actors are really great. You know, I I think it it, it elevates the film. Even more, definitely. Um, let's see. Um, when the film basically was filmed at um, the Field Museum of Natural History in Chicago, um, and um, it wasn't the first choice, apparently, because the American Museum of Natural History in New York was the venue. Um, also, I think that's sourced from the novel as well. But they weren't too keen. They didn't. They didn't want this kind of uh, uh, film. But the uh, uh, one in Chicago, they were very happy, and um, I'm sure they were very happy because it, it highlights the museum beautifully uh, when you actually watch it. Um, 
and that's really a uh, good publicity for them. Yes, I uh, the story is is kind of the normal sort of um, creature feature idea that um, they bring this uh, creature into the environment. It originates from South America. You get this story at the beginning about how it gets into the museum, and then when all these murders uh, are happening, uh, even surrounding bringing the actual uh, artifact box to the museum, we get these murders, and that's when we first meet the detective. But it, all in all, it all leads to the uh, museum. And then, of course, once all hell breaks loose, it's it's fascinating. It's, it's, it's a wonderful journey watching them all cope. And of course, just to add spice, you always have this conflict. I love this uh, conflict in films. And there's this mur murder's happened, and the detectives are saying, "Well, I, I think actually, you know, you shouldn't go ahead with this event, which just happens to be happening." Um, and all these rich people, um, you know, patrons of the museum, leading figures in Chicago are coming, and um, the museum, of course wants this event to go ahead but the detective is not so keen and but he gets told by the mayor it's going ahead lad so that's what happens um, and that it's it's funny because that's happened in you know, quite a few things um in films where you get this conflict people going against the advice oh because well it boils down to money, <laughs> as things do, because, you know, the museum wants the money, and, uh, well, let's get all the rich folk in. And they certainly uh, get in there, and they get trapped. <laughs> yes, serves them right, you might say. And some of them, you think, well, yeah, yes, definitely. But um, it, that's the sort of premise. Then the police that are in there are also trapped, Um as well so they have to try and get this creature which has gone on the loose and uh yes <laughs> it the, the thing is it uh, the, the museum looks so good and actually i was watching it i'm thinking Do you know something I, I recognize some of these uh bits of sets that it was showing the sort of famous bits then i realized it was from a music video I'd actually seen them. It was um, Cheryl Crow's song, you know, If It Makes You Happy, which I really loved as a song. That was from the, that was from the 90s as well. But um, there there we are. It, it just sort of triggered that in me. I know, sorry, I've gone off in another direction, but music it always pops up in my mind as well. But there it is. I saw this in this music video. But... Let's look at it. What what this film does, it uses the uh, museum to great effect. And, and of course, it's got depth. You go down and there's like sort of dark tunnels underneath as well, um, where all sorts are lurking around and we get all this going on, um, which is it's wonderfully filmed, you know. Um, and the killings start pretty quick in the film, anyhow. And it's quite gory as well. You see these heads go flying off and ripped off, and it's it's scary. The great thing about this film is the director is very talented in the way he uses um, the light, because they do it at night, so it's very, very dark sort of scenes within the museum. Because to add to it, when the electric goes down, it makes it even darker on the emergency lighting. So already that adds to the sort of fear and terror of the people inside. And it's, it comes across, the way they film it is it's very dark. And that helps with the scare factors as well, because you don't see as much of the creature or you see bits of the creature as it's doing its killing and this as the film goes along you start to see more of the creature but it makes it really terrifying because you're wondering when it's going to pop up um and it, it's it's so good seeing you know these these creatures are just great the way and the whole idea of behind it as well is just great um 
I won't go into too much because I think it's it's just an interesting idea when you actually see it on film uh, of how the uh, this creature has come about, um, and it's it's fascinating, and they do it in a really intelligent way, um, and I think that just really adds even more to it. This sort of, I mean. Let's face it, it as you're on the edge of your seats, and also you're working out, as usual, who's going to survive, who's going to do this and that, and you get all that as you're watching it. And There's some just some great scenes in there, and there's some great scary kills, if you want to put it like this. Um, and, uh, you know, if you like that kind of uh, film, which a lot of us do, then you're going to love this film. I mean, it's done on such... Uh, um, I mean, relatively, it, it, you look at this film and you think, well, uh, it's one of those films where they haven't used CGI, all these monster, the monster parts, they made three, apparently, of of these creatures. Um, it, they're all done and made, as the, you know, the models, the makeup, the way they do them. That's all done in that way rather than CGI, and it that, it really works so well. Um, it's great, you know. Sometimes you you I actually like that real that it, it adds a realism to it in many ways. I mean, CGI can do that, and it does in some ways. But I always find it fascinating that people can do this and create all these models effectively, and and the makeup and everything and. It's wonderful stuff, and my I always think, wow, well, these people are very talented that do all this, and it's you know great filmmaking process. I mean, we're all fascinated by monsters and um, you know creatures. I mean, if you could look back at the whole history of filmmaking, you know, going even going back to the silent era as the the years have gone on, we they've already started to appear in films and, you know, they just carry on 30s, 40s, 50s. 50s perhaps was even more bringing out these creature features and 60s. It's all gone on throughout all the years and um, audiences have just lapped it up and they still do. There's still this appetite for um, seeing creature features. That's what we'll call it, creature features, yes. There still is the appetite there. And this film is a great example of, of continuing that tradition uh, in a very entertaining way. And, um, you know, uh, it's it's the kind of film that you think, you know, we don't perhaps hear a great, you know, praise about this film. And I, I think it should be praised. It's because of what it set out to do, it, 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 it just does it. it. It gets you excited. It gets you worried and frightened and entertained and it does everything that you want and i love it's and then it's all the way the director has put all this together beautifully you know i mean when you love these kind of films anyhow you just love them and there's lots of them and hey my heck <laughs> why aren't we uh, talking about them more well i'll try and do more eventually you know um but here we are this is this is the relic and it's from 1997. There we are. What more can I say about it? That it's just a really great film, entertaining. It's still available. I think if you look on Amazon, you would find it there and probably on eBay. So it's easy to get a copy. Just if you haven't seen it and you like these kind of films, I recommend this. Really do. Great film. So, I think that's it. Yes, that's it. That's all. Uh, all I've got to say is the usual sort of things, you know, that I say. Uh, like, um, subscribe. You know, if you're interested to get more notifications, subscribe. And, of course, it really helps if you like it. So, if you like it, just give it a like. And all I can say is, it costs note. Not at all, and I say that all the time, but it's free. What do you get free nowadays? Eh? It's free, so do that, eh? Please, he says. Uh, oh, don't bother, and, you know, don't matter. Hey, a bike. So, anyhow, 
That's it. All I've got to say is, I'll see thee, and I'll see thee again. <laughs>